Confessions of a Refashionista. I'm Refashionista Sherry, and today I have 20 absolutely fantastic embellishing tips, tricks, and tutorials for you using items you may already have lurking about your house. So let's get making! This is Confessions of a Refashionista. So in my rockin' Refashionista wardrobe, I have more than a few items that were, you know, kind of boring, and so I simply embellished them. Embellishing is a fantastic upcycling technique where, you know, you basically are just adding something to your garment to zhuzh it up and make it uh, exactly your taste and style. For example, a totally no-so and very temporary embellishment is simply adding a scarf around uh, the neckline of a blouse. Now you can tie it in a bow and then, you know, kind of have a swing in 60s throwback look, or I just kind of, you know, loosely knot it and let it let it hang. <laughs> that's, that's about as easy as you could get for an outfit embellishment. If you want to go a bit further, like I did with, with this here, this is uh, just a vintage scarf that I cut in half and stitched on to the shoulder seams and then added uh, some vintage trim on top to, to cover, you know, the stitches. Very, very easy. <laughs> um, as with all of these, I shall put the links to all of the totally free tutorials down below. So if you see something you want to try, click the link and go ahead and make it yourself. Like I said, these are so, 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 so simple. Now, if you really don't want to faff around at all with sewing or anything like that, grab your bleach and, uh, you know, throw your denim, cotton, linen, what have you into a equal-ish parts of bleach and water mixture and there you have fantastic bleach embellished, I guess reverse dyed clothing. Now with this one I loved how it came out but I really needed to add something else so I raided my scrappy stash and created a scrappy rainbow flag. I mean, I mean how awesome is that? And again, tutorial is down below if you want to make your own. Adding bits and bobs to garments is, again, I can't say this enough. It is so, 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 so easy. Now, this very boring plain top, but when I flip it around, la, la on the back, we have this awesome, this was just a scarf actually. And uh, yeah, I stitched it on and then added a bit of trim and for extra fanciness because, you know, I am who I am, some uh, little beads there <laughs> to the kind of free ends. And I mean, how cool is this now? It's still a bit plain from the front, but whammo from the back when you turn around, you're rocking. Now sticking with the kind of patchy and bleachy theme that we kind of have going on here. This skirt I absolutely adore. It is again bleached and then I just went through all of my scraps in my stash and stitched on a whole bunch of uh, scraps. And also here this pocket I had which is a little bit of embroidery on it. <laughs> this was a leftover from a refashion, as were, you know, all of these. And, um, yeah, my little, <laughs> just to add some personalization, I put my little me on there as well. And this is one of my most favorite garments that I ever made. And again, it was less than an afternoon to put this together, including bleaching and washing it. This next one, I had this shirt I don't know, for years and years and years, I thrifted it a couple of decades ago and it was worn and worn and worn and worn and worn. And then the other months, I guess, I was kind of looking at it going, I really love this, but maybe it's time to finally, after so many years, zhuzh it up. And that's what I did. But with these patches, I didn't just want to put them in, you know, traditional areas. So yeah, we have one over here and one down here. Not, not 
you know, mind blowing, but very, very simple. And, um, yeah, something that I was kind of growing tired of in my wardrobe, I've now grown to love it once again. <laughs> Next one, I mean, I scored this vintage dress online and it is so perfectly, wonderfully vintage in every way. I was thrilled when it finally arrived, but on closer inspection, it had holes all around the bottom hemline, which I mean, come on, not cool. Mention that in the description, people. So. I looked in my uh, patchy stash and voila, went ahead <laughs> and pretty much, you know, over every single hole I added patches and I think it's, it's really unique now. <laughs> Clearly, I'm talking a lot about patches here and I just got one more for you. <laughs> this was an awesome score. I mean, at the thrift shop, and it's just beautiful. It fits me like it was made for me. But, I mean, come on, it was pretty, pretty boring. And so I, uh, again, looked in my patchy stash and found, la la, this absolutely gorgeous Sakura patch, and then did my uh, little doodle stitching all over it to hold it in place. And now I have a beautiful evening dress that, you know, has that little bit of whimsical patch on the end. And uh, yeah, I just wish I had somewhere to wear it other than kind of swanning around my house. So with all of my talk of patches, you may be wondering where exactly can you score patches? Well, uh, here's my, uh, my top tips, plus a tour of my little patchy stash. Now, clearly, I have quite a stash full as I've been collecting them for quite some time. And, of course, you know, you can buy them in stores or online. And these ones usually come as uh, iron-on, which is fantastic. But one of my biggest tips for sourcing patches is, you know, when you're refashioning, sometimes you have some really awesome leftovers. I mean, like, look at that. All I have to do when I'm ready to use this one is carefully chop it out of the excess fabric here and then stitch it on. I mean, that's fantastic. Or the same with these, look at these little baby trousers from when <laughs> my kiddo was just a little one. And yeah, they were so adorable. I kind of chopped off the legs and kept them for, you know, using for a future project. I mean, patches, you can get them really anywhere. But again, one of the best things to do is if you have leftovers and they have some pretty embroidery on them, keep them and use that as a patch in the future. Other things, let me see, what else makes groovy patches? Oh, look, all of these kind of little crocheted bits here that I've kept. Um, let's see what's in here. Oh, look here, little, see, even these little tiny pieces from projects, I hold on to them to use them. Um, right, these are fantastic. I scored these at a charity shop in uh, Germany, in Berlin, and I mean, come on, how beautiful, a whole bag full of these gorgeous, kind of, I'm assuming, handmade little mini appliques. And of course, doilies make absolutely beautiful patches. And again, if you do not have kind of this stuff lying around your house like I do, I mean, like I said, I've been collecting for more than a few years, then you can easily find just bags and bags and bags of this stuff at uh, thrift and charity shops or even online. Sometimes an embellishment isn't just an embellishment. It can actually be super duper useful, like my vintage necktie embellished spaghetti strap dress. Woo, that was a hard one to say. <laughs> now, I really don't like wearing spaghetti straps. They're just kind of annoying and, you know, can never find a bra to wear with them. So my solution is to sew a vintage necktie all around on top of those straps. And I now have transformed this rather boring dress into, uh, you know, a really cool kind of 
necktie collar and I widened those straps so they're actually super comfortable now. And um, yeah, again, tutorial is down below. Now, I'm sure in your little refashionista stash, you must have some leftover denim. And here is the perfect idea to use that up. La la! Create an adorable bow jacket. And again, this tutorial is super duper simple and it has absolutely fabulous results. Now, I'm absolutely positive that this beauty has caught your eye <laughs> and this is no so to the extreme really all i did was glue a whole bunch of faux flowers onto this vintage cropped jacket and i mean it is just phenomenal it took you know, a long time <laughs> to make this, but it was absolutely worth it. And I think I'm going on now about three years since it was made and it is still going strong and looking absolutely fabulous. And to go along with my faux floral jacket, I have my faux floral bag. And this bag had definitely seen better days. So yeah, gluing on some faux flowers covered up all of the kind of dings that it had. And I also took the time to wrap the strap that was quite cracked in, uh, you know, this kind of vintage trim here. And I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous now. <laughs> Now I've already done a blazer transforming kind of tutorial roundup video, so I shall put the link below for that as well. But I'm super duper pleased with my most recent blazer refashion, my suspender blazer. This came out so much better than I ever imagined it would, and it is definitely a wardrobe favorite now. And another one for those groovy denim scraps. I mean, again, as you can see, I did the reverse bleach dye technique on this and ah, then added some scrappy kitties to, uh, to the front. And again, very, very simple and using up some denim scraps. And of course, tutorial is down below. So sometimes, you know, you, you get a vintage something and again, it arrives and it might have a little hole in it. Such was the case with this beautiful dress. And so all I did is really tried my hardest with my embroidery <laughs> skills and uh, created a little paisley out of embroidery thread to uh, kind of mend and conceal the hole there. And all I used here was the split stitch, which is so super easy. It's like one of the easiest embroidery stitches and it is in my Sewing Basics ebook if you want to learn how, you know, to, to hand sew, sew on a button, anchor your stitches, as well as I think nine or ten really awesome embroidery stitches, plus of course a bunch of uh, tutorials to, to use your new skills. I'll put the link for that uh, below as well. This dress I made quite a while ago and it is still one of my favorites. This is simply a really plain black high-low hem dress and all I did was stitch these little rosettes all around the collar, the sleeves, and the bottom hem area. And I mean, it took quite a while because these are tiny little things to stitch them on, but again, totally worth it. I've had this dress for years. I love wearing it. And you could also simply glue all of these on with a strong fabric glue and, and you're laughing. And if you want to use up more of those denim scraps, plus the little rosettes here, you know, create some little rings or a fancy little bracelet. And now it's time to learn how to embellish with buttons. I'm sure not everyone has the ginormous stash of buttons that I do, but um, yeah, it's, it's kind of my job to have a, a ginormous stash of uh, things. So, so let's get to it. Now, if you have 
more than a few extra buttons lying around, you can add them to the cups of a kind of boring cardigan. And not only do you have fancy new cups, but you can walk around making your own music. I really love this jacket. And again, this is one that I've had for more than a few years. Um, it originally had, you know, studs all around the collar here, and I really didn't like them very much. So thankfully they were very simple to remove. And then I, uh, yeah, just stitched on a whole bunch of buttons all the way around. And it is so super cool now and so very me. <laughs> Buttons are also fantastic if you glue or stitch them on to your chopped denim hems. And uh, yeah, you can create some pretty awesome wrap bracelets. Now, of course, you don't have to add as many buttons as I do <laughs> to a garment to kind of fancy it up. You can simply do something like this. And I mean, how lovely does that look now? Just very simple. I switched out the two buttons that were there and added these six buttons. One of them is functional, the rest are not. They're just kind of there for embellishment and decoration and it looks great. I'm sure you might be wondering about the skirts that I'm wearing <laughs> with this uh, funky little blazer. And here it is. <laughs> <laughs> this I actually created for one of my recent celeb copycats. This one was of Celine Dion and I just fell in love with her skirt. And um, yeah, this, can you guess what this is made out of? <laughs> it really is an old skirt and a whole bunch of bath puffs stitched all the way around it. And I absolutely love it. Now, bath puffs are something that I don't think a lot of people really upcycle or reuse, but I, I do. And I shall put the link below to all of my upcycled bath puff tutorials because there's a lot of stuff you can make with them actually. Now, if you don't wanna go kind of full clown crazy <laughs> with your bath puffs on a skirt like this, you can do something a lot more simple. And with this one, I've just added it to the bottom of the skirt and uh, yeah, put a little bit of lace on there as well. And of course, again, this had the bleach uh, reverse dye technique on it. And I mean, how adorable, how adorable is that? I almost forgot to share how quick and easy it is to personalize and embellish those plain tees that you have lurking in your wardrobe. Like this one here, simply grab your bleach and follow my tutorial to, uh, you know, make your own graphic tee. And it's totally unique. This one, of course, says a refashionista. I mean, of course it does. Or if you don't want to be messing about with bleach, grab a marker. Permanent markers are fantastic for drawing whatever the heck you want to draw on a t-shirt. And again, tutorial for that one's down below. And if you want to get a little bit stitchy with it, why not embellish with some t-shirt yarn? I have inspired you a little bit to kind of search through your drawers and cupboards and wardrobe and uh, see what you can find to kind of glue or stitch on to embellish and make your wardrobe just as unique as you feel. And uh, yeah, for loads more rockin' Refashionista, tips, tricks, and tutorials, head on over to refashionistasherry.com and there you will find absolutely everything you need to uh, live your affordable, sustainable lifestyle. Because being eco-friendly should not cost the earth. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I'll catch ya on the zigzag.